Section 9 of Shadowings. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Larry Wilson. Shadowings by Lucadio Hearn. Section 9. Japanese Female Names. 1. By the Japanese, a certain kind of girl is called a rose girl, Bara Musume. Perhaps my reader will think of Tennyson's Queen Rose of the Rosebud Gardens of Girls, and imagine some analogy between the Japanese and the English idea of femininity symbolized by the rose. But there is no analogy whatever. The Bara Musume is not so called because she is delicate and sweet, nor because she blushes, nor because she is rosy. Indeed, a rosy face is not admired in Japan. No, she is compared to a rose chiefly for the reason that a rose has thorns. The man who tries to pull a Japanese rose is likely to hurt his fingers. The man who tries to win a bara musume is apt to hurt himself much more seriously, even unto death. It were better, alone and unarmed, to meet a tiger than to invite the cares of a rose girl. Now the appellation of bara musume, much more rational as a simile than many of our own floral comparisons, can seem strange only because it is not in accord with our poetical usages and emotional habits. It is one in a thousand possible examples of the fact that Japanese similes and metaphors are not of the sort that he who runs may read. And this fact is particularly well exemplified by the yobina, or personal names of Japanese women. Because a yobina happens to be identical with the name of some tree or bird or flower, it does not follow that the personal appellation conveys to Japanese imagination ideas resembling those which the corresponding English word would convey, under like circumstances, to English imagination. Of the yobina that seem to us especially beautiful in translation, only a small number are bestowed for aesthetic reasons. Nor is it correct to suppose, as many persons still do, that Japanese girls are usually named after flowers or graceful shrubs or other beautiful objects. Aesthetic appellations are in use, but the majority of yobina are not aesthetic. Some years ago, a young Japanese scholar published an interesting essay upon this subject. He had collected the personal names of about 400 students of the higher normal school for females, girls from every part of the empire, and he found on his list only between 50 and 60 names possessing aesthetic quality. But concerning even these, he was careful to observe only that they caused an aesthetic sensation, not that they had been given for aesthetic reasons. Among them were such names as Saki, Cape, Mine, Peak, Kishi, Beach, Hama, Shore, Funi, Capital, originally place names, Tsuru, Stork, Tazu, Richfield Stork, and Chizu, Thousand Storks, all such appellations as Yoshino, Fertile Fields, Orino, Weaver's Field, Shirushi, Proof, and Masago, Sand. Few of these could seem aesthetic to a Western mind, and probably no one of them was originally given for aesthetic reasons. Names containing the characters for stork are names having reference to longevity, not to beauty, and a large number of names with the termination no, field or plain, are names referring to moral qualities. I doubt whether even 15% of yobina are really aesthetic. A very much larger portion are names expressing moral or mental qualities. Tenderness, kindness, deafness, cleverness are frequently represented by yobina, but appellations implying physical charm or suggesting aesthetic ideas only are comparatively uncommon. One reason for the fact may be that very aesthetic names are given to geisha and to joro, and consequently vulgarized. But the chief reason, certainly, is that the domestic virtues still occupy in Japanese moral estimate a place not less important than that accorded to religious faith in the life of our own Middle Ages. Not in theory only, but in everyday practice, 
moral beauty is placed far above physical beauty and girls are usually selected as wives not for their good looks but for their domestic qualities among the middle classes a very aesthetic name would not be considered in the best taste among the poorer classes it would scarcely be thought respectable ladies of rank on the other hand are privileged to bear very poetical names yet the majority of the aristocratic yobina also are moral rather than aesthetic but the first great difficulty in the way of a study of yobina is the difficulty of translating them a knowledge of spoken japanese can help you very little indeed a knowledge of chinese also is indispensable the meaning of a name written in kana only in the japanese characters cannot be in most cases even guessed at the chinese characters of the name can alone express it the japanese essayist already referred to found himself obliged to throw out no less than thirty-six names out of a list of two hundred and thirteen simply because these thirty-six having been recorded only in kana could not be interpreted kana give only the pronunciation and the pronunciation of a woman's name explains nothing in a majority of cases transliterated into omaji a yobina may signify two three or even half a dozen different things one of the names thrown out of the list was banka banka might signify mint the plant which would be a pretty name but it might also mean evening haze yuka another rejected name might be an abbreviation of yukabutsu precious but it might just as well mean a floor nochi a third example might signify future yet it could also mean a descendant and various other things my reader will be able to find many other homonyms in the lists of names given further on ai in romaji for instance may signify either love or indigo blue cho a butterfly or superior or long a either sagacious or blooming k either rapture or reverence sato either native home or sugar toshi either year or arrowhead taka tall honorable or falcon the chief and for the present insuperable obstacle to the use of roman letters in writing japanese is the prodigious number of homonyms in the language you need only glance into a good japanese english dictionary to understand the gravity of this obstacle not to multiply examples i shall merely observe that there are nineteen words spelled cho twenty-one spelled ki twenty-five spelled to or to and no less than forty-nine spelled ko or ko yet as i have already suggested the real signification of a woman's name cannot be ascertained even from a literal translation made with the help of the chinese characters such a name for instance as kagami mirror really signifies the pure-minded and this not in the occidental but in the confucian sense of the term ume plum blossom is a name referring to wifely devotion and virtue matsu pine does not refer as an appellation to the beauty of the tree but to the fact that its evergreen foliage is the emblem of vigorous age the name take bamboo is given to a child only because the bamboo has been for centuries a symbol of good fortune the name sen wood fairy sounds charmingly to western fancy yet it expresses nothing more than the parents hope of long life for their daughter and her offspring wood fairies being supposed to live for thousands of years again many names are of so strange a sort that it is impossible to discover their meaning without questioning either the bearer or the giver and sometimes all inquiry proves vain because the original meaning has been long forgotten before attempting to go further into the subject i shall here offer a translation of the tokyo essayist list of names rearranged in alphabetical order without honorific prefixes or suffixes although some classes of common names are not represented the list will serve to show the character of many still popular yobina and also to illustrate several of the facts to which i have already called attention selected names of students and graduates of the higher normal school for females 
1880 to 1895. Number of students so named. I. Indigo, the color, one. I. Love, one. Akasuke, the bright helper, one. Asa, morning, one. Asa, shallow, two. Probably a place name originally. Au, meeting, two. Boon, companion, in the literary sense, one. Might we not quaintly say, a fair writing? Chika, neat, five, probably in the sense of near and dear, but not certainly so. Chitose, a thousand years, one. Chiyo, a thousand generations, one. Chizu, thousand storks, one. Cho, butterfly, one. Cho, superior, two. A, clever, one. A, blooming, two. Etsu, delight, one. Fude, writing brush, one. Fuji, Fuji the mountain, one. Fuji, wisteria flower, two. Fuku, Fuku, name of a plant, Nardosimia japonica, one. Fuku, good fortune, two. Fumi, letter, five. Fui signifies here a letter written by a woman only, a letter written according to the rules of feminine epistolatory style. Fumino, letter field, one. Fusa, tassel, three. Gin, silver, two. Hama, shore, three. Hana, blossom, three. Harue, springtime bay, one. Hatsu, the firstborn, two. Hide, excellent, four. Hide, fruitful, two. Hisano, long plain, two. Ichi, market, four. Iku, nourishing, three. Ine, springing rice, three. Ishi, stone, one. Ito, thread, four. Iwa, rock, one. Jun, the obedient one. Junsuru means to be obedient unto death. The word Jun has a much stronger signification than that which attaches to our word obedience in these modern times. Kagami, mirror, three. Kama, sickle, one. Kame, tortoise, two. Kameyo, generations of the tortoise, one. The tortoise is supposed to live for a thousand years. Kan, the forbearing, eleven. Abbreviations of kan mean forbearance, self-control, etc. The name might equally well be translated patience. Kana, character, in the sense of a written character, too. Kana signifies the Japanese syllabary, the characters with which the language is written. The reader may imagine, if he wishes, that the name signifies Alpha and Omega of all feminine charm. But I confess that I have not been able to find any satisfactory explanation of it. Kane, bronze, three. Katsu, victorious, two. Kazashi, hairpin, or any ornament worn in the hair, one. Kazu, number, that is, great number, one. Ke the respectful, three. Ken, humility, one. Kiku, chrysanthemum, sixth. Kikue, chrysanthemum branch, one. Kikuno, chrysanthemum field, one. Kimi, sovereign, one. Kin, gold, four. Kinu, cloth of silk, one. Kishi, beach, two. Kiyo, Happy Generations, 1. Kiyo, Pure, 5. Ko, Chime, the Sound of the Bell, 1. Ko, Filial Piety, 11. Ko, the Fine, 1. Koma, Philly, 1. Kome, Cleaned Rice, 1. Koto, Koto, the Japanese Harp, 4. Kuma, Bear, 1. Kumi, Braid, 1. Kuni, capital, chief city, one. 
Kuni, Province, 3. Kura, Treasure House, 1. Kurano, Storehouse Field, 1. Kuri, Chestnut, 1. Kuwa, Mulberry Tree, 1. Masa, Straightforward, Upright, 3. Masago, Sand, 1. Masu, Increase, 3. Masue, Branch of Increase, 1. Matsu, Pine, 2. Matsue, Pine's Branch, 1. Michi, The Way, a Doctrine, 4. Mie, Triple Branch, 1. Mikie, Main Branch, 1. Mine, Peak, 2. Mitsu, Light, 5. Mitsue, Shining Branch, 1. Morie, Service Bay, 1. The word service here refers especially to attendance at mealtime, to the serving of rice, etc. Naka, the midmost, 4. Nami, wave, 1. Nobu, fidelity, 6. Nobu, the prolonger, 1. Perhaps in the hopeful meaning of extending the family line, but more probably in the signification that a daughter's care prolongs the life of her parents or of her husband's parents. Nobue, lengthening branch, 1. Nui, tapestry or embroidery, 1. Orino, weaving field, 1. Raku, pleasure, 3. Ren, the arranger, 1. Riku, land or ground, 1. Roku, emolument, 1. Ryo, dragon, 1. Ryu, lofty, 3. Sada, the chaste, 8. Saki, cape or promontory, 1. Saku, composition, 3. Abbreviation of Sakubun, a literary composition. Sato, home, a native place, 2. Sawa, marsh, 1. Sei, force, 1. Seki, barrier, city gate, toll gate, etc., 3. Sen, ferry, 3. As a matter of fact, we have no English equivalent for the word sen or senen, signifying a being possessing magical powers of all kinds and living for thousands of years. Some authorities consider the belief in senen of Indian origin and probably derived from old traditions of the Rishi. Setsu, true, tender, and true, two. Shizu, the calmer, one. Shizu, peace, two. Shige, twofold, two. Shika, deer, two. Shikae, deer inlet, one. Shime, the clasp, fastening, one. Shin, truth, one. Shina, goods, one. Shina, virtue, one. Shino, slender bamboo, one. Shirushi, the proof, evidence, one. Shun, the excellent. Sue, the last, two. Sugi, cedar, cryptomeria, one. Sute, forsaken, foundling, one. Suzu, little bell, eight. Suzu, ten, one. Suzue, branch of little bells, one. Tai, exquisite, one. Taka, honor, two. Taka, lofty, nine. Take, bamboo, one. Tama, jewel, one. Tamaki, ring, one. Tame, for the sake of, three. Tani, valley, four. Tazu, rice field stork, one. Tetsu, iron, four. Toku, virtue, two. Tome, stop or cease, one. Such a name may signify that the parents resolved after the birth of the girl to have no more children. Tomi, riches, three. Tomiju, wealthy and longevity, one. Tomo, the friend, four. Tora, tiger, one. Toshi, arrowhead, one. Toyo, abundance, three. Sugi, next, that is, second in order of birth, two. Tsuna, bond, rope or fetter, one. 
tsune the constant or as we should say constance ten tsuru stork four ume plum blossom one umegae plum tree spray one ume no plum tree field two urano shore field one ushi cow or ox one this extraordinary name is probably to be explained as a reference to date of birth according to the old chinese astrology years months days and hours were all named after the signs of the zodiac and were supposed to have some mystic relation to those signs i surmise that miss ushi was born at the hour of the ox on the day of the ox in the month of the ox and the year of the ox ushi no toshi no ushi no tsuki to ushi no hii ushi no koku uta poem or song one wakana young na probably the rape plant is referred to one yae eightfold one yasu the tranquil one yo the positive as opposed to negative or feminine in the old chinese philosophy therefore perhaps masculine one yone rice in the old sense of wealth four yoshi the good one yoshino good field one yu the valiant one yuri lily one it will be observed that in the above list the names referring to constancy forbearance and filial piety have the highest numbers attached to them end of section nine Section 10 of Shadowings. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Larry Wilson. Shadowings by Lufcadio Hearn. Section 10. Japanese Female Names 2. A few of the more important rules in regard to Japanese female names must now be mentioned. The great majority of these yobina are words of two syllables. Personal names of respectable women belonging to the middle and lower classes are nearly always disyllables, except in cases where the name is lengthened by certain curious suffixes which I shall speak of further on. Formerly, a name of three or more syllables indicated that the bearer belonged to a superior class. But even among the upper classes today, female names of only two syllables are in fashion among the people it is customary that a female name of two syllables should be preceded by the honorific o and followed by the title san as o matsu san the honorable miss or mrs pine o ume san the honorable miss plum blossom but if the name happen to have three syllables the honorific o is not used a woman named kikue chrysanthemum branch is not addressed as o kikue san but only as kikue san under certain conditions of intimacy both prefix and title are dropped they are dropped also by the superior in addressing an inferior for example a lady would not address her maid as as o yone san but merely as yone before the names of ladies the honorific o is no longer used as formerly even when the name consists of one syllable only instead of the prefix an honorific suffix is appended to the yobina the suffix ko a pleasant girl named tomi would be addressed by her equals as otomi san but a lady of the same name would be addressed as tomiko mrs shimoda head teacher of the peeresses school for example has the beautiful name uta she would be addressed by letter as shimoda utako and would so sign herself in replying the family name by japanese custom always preceding the personal name instead of being as with us placed after it the suffix ko is written in the chinese character meaning child and must not be confused with the word ko written with a different chinese character meaning little which so often appears in names of dancing girls i should venture to say that this genteel suffix has the value of a caressing diminutive and that the name Aiko might be fairly well rendered by the Amoretta of Spencer's Fairy Queen. 
be this as it may a japanese lady named setsu or sada would not be addressed in these days as o setsu or o sada but as setsuko or sadako on the other hand if a woman of the people were to sign herself as setsuko or sadako she would certainly be laughed at since the suffix would give to her appellation the meaning of the lady setsu or the lady sada i have said that the honorific o is placed before yobina of women of the middle and lower classes even the wife of a kurumaya would probably be referred to as the honorable mrs such a one but there are very remarkable exceptions to this general rule regarding the prefix o in some country districts the common yobina of two syllables is made a trisyllable by the addition of a peculiar suffix and before such trisyllabic names the o is never placed for example the girls of wakayama in the province of ki usually have added to the yobina the suffix e signifying inlet bay firth sometimes river thus we find such names as namie wave bay tomie riches bay sumie dwelling bay shizue quiet bay tamae jewel bay again there is a provincial suffix no meaning field or plain which is attached to the majority of female names in certain districts yoshino fertile field umeno plum flower field shizuno quiet field urano coast field utano song field are typical names of this class a girl called namae or kikuno is not addressed as o namae san or o kikuno san but as namae san or kikuno san this suffix must not be confused with the suffix e signifying branch which is also attached to many popular names without seeing the chinese character you cannot decide whether the name tamae for example means jewel branch or jewel inlet san abbreviation of sama a word originally meaning form appearance when placed after a female name corresponds to either our miss or missus placed after a man's name it has at least the value of our mister perhaps even more the unabbreviated form sama is placed after the names of high personages of either sex and after the names of divinities the shinto gods are styled as kami sama which might be translated as the lord supreme the bodhisattva jizo is called jizo sama the lord jizo a lady may also be styled sama a lady called ayako might very properly be addressed as ayako sama but when a lady's name independently of the suffix consists of more than three syllables it is customary to drop either the ko or the title thus the lady ayame would not be spoken of as ayame ko sama but more euphoniously as ayame sama or as ayame ko ayame sama however is rather familiar and this form cannot be used by a stranger in verbal address though a letter may be directed with the name so written as a rule the ko is the more respectful form so much having been said as regards the etiquette of prefixes and suffixes i shall now attempt a classification of female names beginning with popular yobina these will be found particularly interesting because they reflect something of race feeling in the matter of ethics and aesthetics and because they serve to illustrate curious facts relating to japanese custom the first place i have given to names of purely moral meaning usually bestowed in the hope that the children will grow up worthy of them but the list should in no case be regarded as complete they are only representative furthermore i must confess my inability to explain the reason of many names which proved as much of riddles to japanese friends as to myself names of virtues and proprieties o ai love o chie intelligence o chu loyalty o jin tenderness humanity o jun faithful to death o kaio forgiveness pardon o ken wise in the sense of moral discernment o ko filial piety o masa righteous just o michi 
the way doctrine misael honor wifely fidelity onal the upright honest onobu the faithful ore propriety in the old chinese sense oretsu chaste and true oryo the generous magnanimous osada the chaste osei truth oshin faith in the sense of fidelity trust oshizu the tranquil calm souled osetsu fidelity wifely virtue otame for the sake of a name suggesting unselfishness ote the docile in the meaning of virtuous obedience otoku virtue otomo the friend especially in the meaning of mate companion otsume constancy oyasu the amiable gentle oyoshi the good oyoshi the respectful the next list will appear at first sight more heterogeneous than it really is it contains a larger variety of appellations than the previous list but nearly all of the yobina refer to some good quality which the parents trust that the child will display or to some future happiness which they hope that she will deserve to the latter category belong such names of felicitation as mio and masayo miscellaneous names expressing personal qualities or parental hopes o atsu the generous liberal o chika closely dear o chika thousand rejoicings o cho the long probably in reference to life o dai great o den transmission bequest from ancestors tradition o e fortunate o e prosperity o n charm o n prolongation of life o etsu surpassing o etsu the playful merry joyful o fuku good luck o gen source spring a fountain o haya the quick light nimble o hide superior hideo superior generations o hiro the broad o hisa the long isamu the vigorous spirited robust ojin super excellent kameo generations of the tortoise okane the doubly accomplished from the strange verb kaneru signifying to do two things at the same time kaoru the fragrant okata worthy person okatsu the victorious okay delight okay the respectful oken the humble okichi the fortunate okimi the sovereign peerless okiwa the distinguished okiyo okiyoshi the clear in the sense of bright beautiful okuru a she who comes one is reminded of o whistle and i'll come to you my lad but no japanese female name could have the implied signification more probably the reference is to household obedience omaru the round plump omasa the genteel masayo generations of the just omasu increase omie triple branch omiki stem omio triple cord omitsu abundance omiwa the far seeing omiwa three spokes such is the meaning of the characters i cannot understand the name a buddhist explanation suggests itself but there are few if any buddhist yobina omiyo beautiful generations miyuki deep snow this beautiful name refers to the silence and calm following a heavy snowfall but even for the japanese it is an aesthetic name also suggesting both tranquillity and beauty omoto origin onaka friendship orai trust uraku pleasure the name seems curious in view of the common proverb raku waku no tame pleasure is the seed of pain osachi bliss osai the talented sakai prosperity usaku the blooming 
ose the refined in the sense of clear ose force osen senen wood fairy oshige exuberant oshime the total summum bonum oshin the fresh oshin truth oshina goods possessions shirushi proof evidence oshizu the humble osho truth oshun excellence osuki the beloved ayame osuke the helper osumi the refined in the sense of sifted osute the forsaken foundling not necessarily a real foundling sometimes the name may be explained by a curious old custom in a certain family several children in succession die shortly after birth it is decided according to traditional usage that the next child born must be exposed a girl is the next child born she is carried by a servant to some lonely place in the fields or elsewhere and left there then a peasant or other person hired for the occasion it is necessary that he should be of no kin to the family promptly appears pretends to find the babe and carries it back to the parental home see this pretty family he says to the father of the girl will you not take care of it the child is received and named sute the foundling by this innocent artifice it was formerly and perhaps in some places is still supposed that those unseen influences which had caused the death of the other children might be thwarted otae the exquisite otaka the honorable otaka the tall takara treasure precious object otama jewel tamae jewel branch tokiwa eternally constant everlasting rock but the ethical meaning is constantly everlasting as the rocks tokiwa is a name famous both in history and tradition for it was the name of the mother of yoshitsune her touching story and especially the episode of her flight through the deep snow with her boys has been a source of inspiration to generations of artists otomi riches otoshi the deft skilful otsuma the wife oyori the trustworthy owaka the young place names or geographical names are common but they are particularly difficult to explain a child may be called after a place because born there or because the parental home was there or because of beliefs belonging to the old chinese philosophy regarding direction and position or because of traditional custom or because of ideas connected with the religion of shinto place names o fuji mount fuji o hana coast o ichi market a fair o io io province of io shikoku okawa rare river okishi beach shore okita north okiwa border okuni province okyo capital metropolis kyoto omachi town matsue matsue chief city of izumo omina south abbreviation of minami omine peak omiya temple shinto i must confess that in classing this name as a place name i am only making a guess it seems to me that the name probably refers to the ichinomiya or chief shinto temple of some province omon gate i fancy that this name like that of oseki must have originated in the custom of naming children after the place or neighborhood where the family lived but here again i am guessing omura village onami wave this classification also is a guess i could learn nothing about the name except the curious fact that it is said to be unlucky naniwa naniwa ancient name of osaka onishi west orin park osaki cape osato native place village also home osawa marsh oseki toll gate barrier shigeki thick wood forest oshima 
island. Osono, flower garden. Otaki, cataract, waterfall. Otani, valley. Otsuka, milestone. Oyama, mountain. The next list is a curious medley, so far as regards the quality of the yobina comprised in it. Some are really aesthetic and pleasing, others industrial only, while a few might be taken for nicknames of the most disagreeable kind. Names of objects and of occupations especially pertaining to women. Ayakor, damask pattern. O Aya. Aya Nishiki, the famous figured damask brocade of Kyoto, is probably referred to. O Fumi, woman's letter. O Fusa, tassel. O Ito, thread. O Kama, rice sickle. O Kama, sickle, is a familiar peasant name. O Kama, cauldron or iron cooking pot, and several other ugly names in this list are servants' names. Servants in old time not only trained their children to become servants, but gave them particular names referring to their future labors. Okama, cauldron. Kazashi, hairpin. Okinu, cloth of silk. Okoto, harp. Onabe, pot or cooking vessel. Onui, embroidery. Oshime, clasp, ornamental fastening. Osome, the dyer. Otaru, cask or barrel. The following list consists entirely of material nouns used as names. There are several yobina among them of which I cannot find the emblematical meaning. Generally speaking, the yobina which signify precious substances, such as silver and gold, are aesthetic names, and those which signify common hard substances, such as stone, rock, iron, are intended to suggest firmness or strength of character. But the name rock is also sometimes used as a symbol of the wish for long life, or long continuance of the family line. The curious name Suna has nothing, however, to do with individual grit. It is half moral and half aesthetic. Fine sand, especially colored sand, is much prized in this fairyland of landscaped gardening, where it is used to cover spaces that must always be kept spotless and beautiful and never trodden, except by the gardener. Material nouns used as names. Ogin, silver. Oishi, stone. Oiwa, rock. Okane, bronze. Okaze, air, perhaps wind. I cannot find any explanation of this curious name. Okin, gold. Oruri, ruriko, emerald, emeraldine. The Japanese name does not give the same quality of aesthetic sensation as the name Esmeralda. The ruri is not usually green, but blue, and the term ruriiro, emerald color, commonly signifies a dark violet. Oryu, fine metal. Osato, sugar. Oseki, stone. Oshiwo, salt. Osuna, sand. Osuzu, tin. Otane, seed. Otetsu, iron. The following five yobina are aesthetic names, although literally signifying things belonging to intellectual work. Four of them at least refer to calligraphy, the matchless calligraphy of the Far East, rather than to anything we should call literary beauty. Literary names. Obun, composition. Ofude, writing brush. Ofumi, letter. Okaku, writing. O Uta, poem. Names relating to number are very common, but also very interesting. They may be loosely divided into two subclasses, names indicating the order of the time of birth and names of felicitation. Such yobina as Ichi, San, Roku, Hachi usually refer to the order of birth but sometimes they record the date of birth. For example, I know a person called Oroku, who received his name not because she was the sixth child born in the family, but because she entered this world upon the sixth day of the sixth month of the sixth Meiji. 
it will be observed that the numbers two five and nine are not represented in this list the mere idea of such names as oni ogo or oku seems to a japanese absurd i do not know exactly why unless it to be that they suggest unpleasant puns the place of oni is well supplied however by the name otsugi next which will be found in a subsequent list names signifying numbers ranging from eighty to a thousand and upward are names of felicitation they express the wish that the bearer may live to a prodigious age or that her posterity may flourish through the centuries numerals and words relating to number oichi one osan three omitsu three oyotsu four oroku six oshichi seven ohachi eight oju ten oiso fifty such a name may record the fact that the girl was a first-born child and the father fifty years old at the time of her birth oyaso eighty ohyaku hundred the o before this trisyllable seems contrary to rule but hyaku is pronounced almost like a disyllable oyao eight hundred osen thousand omichi three thousand oman ten thousand ochiyo thousand generations yachiyo eight thousand generations osige twofold oyae eightfold okazu great number omina all ohan half better half the reader may query but i believe that this name originated in the old custom of taking a single character of the father's name sometimes also a character of the mother's name to compose the child's name with perhaps in this case the name of the girl's father was hanyemon or hanbei oiku how many other names relating to order of birth ohatsu beginning firstborn otsugi next the second onaka midmost otome stop cease osue last some of the next group of names are probably aesthetic but such names are sometimes given only in reference to the time or season of birth and the reason for any particular yobina of this class is difficult to decide without personal inquiry names relating to time and season oharu spring onatsu summer o aki autumn o fuyu winter o asa morning o cho dawn o yoi evening o sayo night o ima now o toki time opportunity o toshi year of plenty names of animals real or mythical form another class of yobina a name of this kind generally represents the hope that the child will develop some quality or capacity symbolized by the creature after which it has been called names such as dragon tiger bear etc are intended in most cases to represent moral rather than other qualities the moral symbolism of the koi carp is too well known to require explanation here the names kamme and tsuru refer to longevity koma curious as the fact may seem is a name of endearment names of birds fishes animals etc chidori sanderling okame tortoise okoi carp soprinus carpio okuma filly or pony okuma bear oryo dragon oshika deer otai bream christophorus cardinalis otaka hawk otako cuttlefish otatsu dragon otora tiger otori bird otsuru stork sometimes this name is shortened to otsu in tokyo at the present time it is the custom to drop the honorific o before such abbreviations and to add to the name the suffix chan as in the case of children's names thus a young woman may be caressingly addressed as tsuchan or otsuru yachan 
for Oyasu. Owashi, eagle. Even yobina, which are the names of flowers or fruits, plants or trees, are in most cases names of moral or felicitous, rather than of aesthetic meaning. The plum flower is an emblem of feminine virtue, the chrysanthemum of longevity, the pine both of longevity and constancy, the bamboo of fidelity, the cedar of moral rectitude, the willow of docility and gentleness as well as of physical grace. The symbolism of the lotus and of the cherry flower are probably familiar, but such names as hana, blossom, and ben, petal, are aesthetic in the true sense, and the lily remains in Japan, as elsewhere, an emblem of feminine grace. Flower names Ayame, iris, iris setosa, or iris sibricia, azami, thistle flower, oben, petal, ofuji, wisteria wisteria chinensis ohana blossom okiku chrysanthemum oran orchid oren lotus sakurako cherry blossom oume plum flower oyuri lily names of plants fruits and trees oine rice in the blade kaede maple leaf Okaya, rush. Imperata, arundanacea. Okaya, yew. Torea nucifera. Okuri, chestnut. Okuwa, mulberry. Omaki, fir. Photocorpus chinensis. Omame, bean. Omono, peach, the fruit. Yet this name may possibly have been written with the wrong character. There is another yobina, momo signifying hundred, as in the phrase momoyo, for a hundred ages. Onara, oak. Oryu, willow. Samae, sprouting rice. Osane, fruit seed. Oshino, slender bamboo. Osuge, reed. Scurpus maritimus. Osugi, cedar. Cryptomeria japonica. Otake, bamboo. Otsuta ivy cissus thumbergii oyae double blossom a flower named certainly but yae here is probably an abbreviation of yae zakura the double flower of a particular species of cherry tree oyone rice and grain wakana young na brassica chinensis names signifying light or color seem to us the most aesthetic of all yobina, and they probably seem so to Japanese. Nevertheless, the relative purport even of these names cannot be divined at sight. Colors have moral and other values in the old nature philosophy, and an appellation that to the Western mind suggests only luminosity or beauty may actually refer to moral or social distinction, to the hope that the girl so named will become illustrious. Names signifying brightness. Omika, new moon. Mika is an abbreviation of Mikazuki, the moon of the third night of the old lunar month. Omitsu, light. Oshimo, frost. Oteru, the shining. Otsuki, moon. Otsuya, the glossy, lustrous. Otsuyu, dew. Oyuki, snow. Color names. O ai, indigo. O aka, red. O iro, color. O kom, deep blue. O kuro, dark, literally black. Midori, green. Murasaki, purple. Midori and Murasaki, especially the latter, should properly be classed with aristocratic yobina, and both are very rare. I could find neither in the collection of aristocratic names which was made for me from the records of the Pyrrhus's school, but I discovered a Midori in a list of middle-class names. Color names being remarkably few among Yobina, I thought it better in this instance to group the whole of them together independently of class distinctions. Oshiro, white. The following and final group of female names contains several queer puzzles. 
japanese girls are sometimes named after the family crest and heraldry might explain one or two of these yobina but why a girl should be called a ship i am not sure of being able to guess perhaps some reader may be reminded of nietzsche's little brig called angeline angeline they call me so now a ship one time a maid ah and evermore a maid love the steersman to and fro turns the wheel so finely made but such a fancy would not enter into a japanese mind i find however in a list of family crests two varieties of design representing a ship twenty representing an arrow and two representing a bow names difficult to classify or explain ofuku raiment clothing possibly this name belongs to the same class as onui embroidery osome the dyer but i am not sure ofune ship or boat ohina doll a paper doll perhaps the name of caress the word hina is applied especially to the little paper dolls made by hand for amusement representing young ladies with elaborate coiffure and it is also given to the old-fashioned dolls representing courtly personages in full ceremonial costume the true doll doll baby is called ningyo okono this onao still more onari thunder peal onibo palanquin orai thunder orui sort kind species o suzu little bell perhaps this name is given because of the sweet sound of the suzu a tiny metal bell with a little stone or other hard object inside to make the ringing it is a pretty japanese custom to put one of these little suzu in the silk charm bag namori bukero which is attached to a child's girdle the suzu rings with every motion that the child makes somewhat like one of those tiny bells which we attach to the neck of a pet kitten suzue branch of little bells otada the only tamaki armlet bracelet otami folk common people otoshi arrowhead or barb otsui pear match otsuna rope bond oyumi bow weapon before passing on to the subject of aristocratic names i must mention an old rule for japanese names a curious rule that might help to account for sundry puzzles in the preceding lists this rule formerly applied to all personal names masculine or feminine it cannot be fully explained in the present paper for a satisfactory explanation would occupy at least fifty pages but stated in the briefest possible way the rule is that the first or head character of a personal name should be made to accord in chinese philosophic sense with the supposed say or astrologically determined nature of the person to whom the name is given the required accordance being decided not by the meaning but by the sound of the chinese written character some vague idea of the difficulties of the subject may be obtained from the accompanying table phonetic relation of the five elemental natures to the japanese syllabary end of section ten section eleven of shadowings this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by larry wilson shadowings by lufcadio hearn section eleven japanese female names three for examples of contemporary aristocratic names i consulted the reports of the kwazoku jokako pierce's school published between the nineteenth and twenty-seventh years of meiji eighteen eighty six to eighteen ninety five the kwazoku jokako admits other students besides daughters of the nobility but for the present purposes the names of the latter only to the number of one hundred and forty seven have been selected it will be observed that names of three or more syllables are rare among these and also that the modern aristocratic yobina of two syllables as pronounced and explained differ little from ordinary yobina 
but as written in chinese they differ greatly from other female names being in most cases represented by characters of a complex and unfamiliar kind the use of these more elaborate characters chiefly accounts for the relatively large number of homonyms to be found in the following list personal names of the lady students of the kwazoku jogako akiko autumn akiko the clear-minded akiko dawn asako fair morning ayako silk damask chiharuko a thousand springs chikako near close chitsuruko a thousand storks chiyoko a thousand generations eiko bell chime etsuko delight fujiko wisteria fukuko good fortune fuiko a woman's letter fuyoko lotus flower fuyoko winter hanako flower hanako fair blooming haruko the tranquil haruko spring the season of flowers haruko the far removed in the sense perhaps of superlative hatsuko the firstborn hideko excelling hideko surpassing hiroko magnanimous literally broad large in the sense of beneficence hiroko widespreading with reference to family prosperity hisako long-lasting hisako continuing hoshiko star ikuko the quick in the sense of living imako now ihoko five hundred probably a name of felicitation itoko sewing thread kameko tortoise kameko going around it is possible that this name was made simply by taking one character of the father's name the girl's name otherwise conveys no intelligible meaning kaneko bell the character indicates a large suspended bell katako condition katsuko first kazuko number a great number kazuko the obedient kiyoko the pure ko filial piety the suffix ko is sometimes dropped for reasons of euphony and sometimes for reasons of good taste difficult to explain to readers unfamiliar with the japanese language even when the name consists of only one syllable or of two syllables kōko stork koto heart kuniko province kuni country in the largest sense kyōko capital metropolis machi ten thousand thousand makoto true heart masako the trustworthy sure masako the upright masuko increase matako completely holy matsuko pine tree michiko three thousand mine peak mineko mountain range mitsuko light radiance miyoko beautiful generations moroko origin source nagako long probably in reference to time nagako long life namiko wave naako correct upright nyoko gem treasure this name is borrowed from the name of the sacred gem nyoihoju which figures both in shinto and in buddhist legend the divinity jizo is usually represented holding in one hand his gem which is said to have the power of gratifying any desire that its owners can entertain perhaps the nyoyoju may be identified with the gem treasure veluria mentioned in the sutra of the great king of glory chapter one see sacred books of the east volume eleven nobuko faithful nobuko abundance plenty nobuko the prolonger noriko precept doctrine nui embroidery sewing oki offing perhaps originally a place name a naval officer named oki told me that his family had originally settled in the oki islands islands of the offing this interesting coincidence suggested to me that the above yobina 
might have had the same origin sadako the chaste sadako the sure trustworthy sakurako cherry blossom sakae the prosperous satoko home satoko the discriminating sekiko great setsuko the chaste chigeko flourishing chigeko exuberant in the sense of rich growth chigeko upgrowing chigeko fragrance chigiko prudence shimako island shinko the fresh new shizuko the quiet calm shizue quiet river sonoko garden sueko last in the sense of youngest sukeko the helper sumiko the clear spotless refined sumiko the veritable real sumiko clear river suzuko ten suzuko little bell suzume sound of little bell takako high lofty superior takako filial piety takako precious takeko bamboo takiko waterfall tamako gem jewel tamako gem written with a different character tameko for the sake of tamiko people folks tameko successful tatsuko attaining tatsuruko many storks so written but probably pronounced as two syllables only tatsuruko rice field stork teruko beaming luminous tetsuko iron tokiko time tomeko cessation tomiko riches tomo intelligence tomo knowledge tomoko friendship toshiko the quickly perceiving toyoko fruitful tsune constancy tsuneko ordinary usual common tsuneko ordinary written with a different character tsuneko faithful in the sense of wifely fidelity tsuruko stork tsuyako the lustrous shining glossy ume female hair umeko plum blossom yachiko eight thousand yasoko eighty yasoshiko eighty four yasuko the maintainer supporter yasuko the respectful yasuko the tranquil minded yoneko rice yoriko the trustful yoshi eminent celebrated yoshiko fragrance yoshiko the good or gentle yoshiko the lovable yoshiko the ladylike gentle in the sense of refined yoshiko the joyful yoshiko congratulation yoshiko the happy yoshiko bright and clear yukiko the lucky yukiko snow yukuko going yutaka plenty affluence superabundance four in the first part of this paper i suggested that the custom of giving very poetical names to geisha and to joro might partly account for the unpopularity of purely aesthetic yobina and in the hope of correcting certain foreign misapprehensions i shall now venture a few remarks about the names of geisha geisha names like other classes of names although full of curious interest and often in themselves really beautiful have become hopelessly vulgarized by association with a calling the reverse of respectable strictly speaking they have nothing to do with the subject of the present study inasmuch as they are not real personal names but professional appellations only not yobina but gaimyo a large proportion of such names can be distinguished by certain prefixes or suffixes attached to them they can be known for example one by the prefix waka signifying young as in the names wakagusa young grass wakazuru young stork wakamurasaki young purple wakakoma young filly two by the prefix ko signifying little as in the names koen little charm kohana little flower kozakura 
little cherry tree three by the suffix ryo signifying dragon the ascending dragon being especially a symbol of success as tamaryo jewel dragon hanaryo flower dragon kinryo golden dragon four by the suffix ji signifying to serve to administer as in the names utaji shineji katsuji five by the suffix suke signifying help as in the names tamasuke komasuke six by the suffix kichi signifying luck fortune as utakichi songs luck tamakichi jewel fortune seven by the suffix giku i e kiku signifying chrysanthemum as mitsugiku three chrysanthemums hinagiku doll chrysanthemum kokiku little chrysanthemum eight by the suffix tsuru signifying stork emblem of longevity as komatsuru filly stork kotsuru little stork itosuru thread stork these forms will serve for illustration but there are others geimyo are written as a general rule with only two chinese characters and are pronounced as three or as four syllables geimyo of five syllables are occasionally to be met with geimyo of only two syllables are rare at least among names of dancing girls and these professional appellations have seldom any moral meaning they signify things relating to longevity wealth pleasure youth or luck perhaps especially to luck of late years it became a fashion among certain classes of geisha in the capital to assume real names with the genteel suffix ko and even aristocratic yobina in eighteen eighty nine some of the tokyo newspapers demanded legislative measures to check the practice this incident would seem to afford proof of public feeling upon the subject end of section eleven section twelve of shadowings this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by larry wilson shadowings by lucario hearn section twelve old japanese songs this new year's morning i find upon my table two most welcome gifts from a young poet of my literary class one is a roll of cloth for a new kimono cloth such as my western reader never saw the brown warp is cotton thread but the woof is a soft white paper string irregularly speckled with black when closely examined the black specklings prove to be chinese and japanese characters for the paper woof is made out of manuscript manuscript of poems which has been deftly twisted into fine cord with the written surface outwards the general effect of the white black and brown in the texture is a warm mouse gray in many izumo homes a similar kind of cloth is manufactured for family use but this piece was woven especially for me by the mother of my pupil it will make a most comfortable winter robe and when wearing it i shall be literally clothed with poetry even as a divinity might be clothed with the sun the other gift is poetry also but poetry in the original state a wonderful manuscript collection of japanese songs gathered from unfamiliar sources and particularly interesting from the fact that nearly all of them are furnished with refrains there are hundreds of compositions old and new including several extraordinary ballads many dancing songs and a surprising variety of love songs neither in sentiment nor in construction do any of these resemble the japanese poetry of which i have already in previous books offered specimens in translation the forms are in most cases curiously irregular but their irregularity is not without a strange charm of its own i am going to offer examples of these compositions partly because of their unfamiliar emotional quality and partly because i think that something can be learned from their strange art of construction the older songs selected from the antique drama 
seem to me particularly worthy of notice the thought or feeling and its utterance are supremely simple yet by primitive devices of reiteration and of pause very remarkable results have been obtained what strikes me especially noteworthy in the following specimen is the way that the phrase begun with the third line of the first stanza and interrupted by a kind of burthen is repeated and finished in the next stanza perhaps the suspension will recall to western readers the effect of some english ballads with double refrains or of such quaint forms of french song as the famous au jardin de mon pierre voler mon cœur volé il y a une première du tout du but in the japanese song the reiteration of the broken phrase produces a slow dreamy effect as unlike the effect of the french composition as the movements of a japanese dance are unlike those of any western round kono yukuwa probably from the eleventh century kono yukuwa karika kugurika kari naraba refrain areya toto areya toto kari nara na norizo simashi nao kugui nariya refrain toto that which yonder flies wild goose is it swan is it wild goose if it be areya toto areya toto wild goose if it be its name i soon shall say wild swan if it be better still toto there are many old lyrics in the above form here is another song of different construction also from the old drama there is no refrain but there is the same peculiar suspension of phrase and the effect of the quadruple repetition is emotionally impressive isora ga saki ni tae tsuru amamo tae tsuru amamo wagimoko ga tameto tae tsuru amamo tae tsuru amamo off the cape of isora even the fisherman catching tai even the fisherman catching tai works for the sake of the woman beloved even the fisherman catching tai even the fisherman catching tai chrysopras cardinalis a kind of sea bream generally esteemed the best of japanese fishes but a still more remarkable effect is obtained in the following ancient song by the extraordinary reiteration of an uncompleted phrase and by a double suspension i can imagine nothing more purely natural indeed the realism of these simple utterances has almost the quality of pathos agemaki old lyrical drama date uncertain agemaki wo waseden ni yarette ya so omoto so omoto so omoto so omoto so omoto so omoto nanemo sezushite Harubisura, 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 harubisura. My darling boy, oh, they have sent him to the rice fields. When I think about him, when I think, when I think, when I think, when I think. When I think about him, I doing nothing at all, even on this spring day, even this spring day, even this spring day, even this spring day even on this spring day it was formerly the custom to shave the heads of boys leaving only a tuft or lock of hair on either temple such a lock was called agemaki a word also meaning tassel and eventually the term came to signify a boy or a lad in these songs it is used as a term of endearment much as an english girl might speak of her sweetheart as my dear lad or my darling boy other forms of repetition of refrain are furnished in the two following lyrics bindatara supposed to have been composed as early as the twelfth century bindatara wo ayuga seba koso ayuga seba koso aikyo zuitare yareko toto yareko toto with loosened hair only because of having tossed it only because of having shaken it. Oh, sweet she is. Yareko toto, 
Yareko Toto. Samawatenin, probably from the sixteenth century. Samawatenin, sore sore, tontorori, otome no sugata, kumo no kayo iji, chirato mita, tontorori, otome no sugata, kumo no kayoji, chirato mita, tontorori. My beloved an angel is, sore sore, tontorori. The maiden's form is the passing of clouds. In a glimpse I saw, Tontorori. The maiden's form in the passage of clouds. In a glimpse I saw, Tontorori. Literally a tenin, that is to say, an inhabitant of the Buddhist heaven. The tenin are usually represented as beautiful maidens. My next selection is from a love song of uncertain date, belonging to the Kamakura period, eleven eighty six two thirteen thirty two this fragment is chiefly remarkable for its buddhist allusions and for its very regular form of stanza makato yara kashima no minato ni miroko no mifune ga tsuite gozarimosu yo no sa ioye ioye sa ioye ioye obashira wa kogane no hibashira no niwa keikyo no go no man makimono sa ioye ioye sa ioye ioye i know not if it's true that to the port of kashima the august ship of miroku has come yo no sa ioye ioye sa ioye ioye miroku bosatsu by trey bodhisattva is the next great buddha to come as for the mast, it is the mast of gold. The sail is the fifth august roll of the Hokkeikyo. Sa ioye ioye, sa ioye ioye. The Japanese popular name for the Chinese version of the Sadharma Pundarika Sutra. Many of the old Buddhist scriptures were written upon long scrolls called makimono, a name also given to pictures printed upon long rolls of silk paper. Otherwise interesting, with its queer refrain, is another song called Agemaki, belonging to one of the curious class of lyrical dramas known as Sayabara. This may be found fault with as somewhat free, but I cannot think it more open to objection than some of our much-admired Elizabethan songs, which were probably produced at about the same time. Agemaki, probably from the 16th century. Agemaki ya, ton ton, hirobakari ya, ton ton, sakarete letare domo, marobi, ainikeri, ton ton, kayori ainakeri, ton ton. O oh, my darling boy, ton ton, though a fathom apart, ton ton, sleeping separated, by rolling we came together, ton ton, by slow approaches we came together, ton ton. Literally, hiro. The hero is a measure of about five feet English, and is used to measure breadth as well as depth. My next group of selections consists of local songs, by which term the collector means songs peculiar to particular districts or provinces. They are old, though less old than the composition previously cited, and their interest is chiefly emotional. But several, it will be observed, have curious refrains. Songs of this sort are sung especially in the village dances Bon Odori and Honen Odori. Love Song Province of Echigo Hanaka Cho Choka Cho Choka Hanaka Don Don Kitewa Chira Chira Mayo Waseru Kitewa Chiri Chiri Mayo Waseru Tai Chokane Sokane Don Don Flower is it? Butterfly is it? Butterfly or flower? Don don. When you come thus flickering, I am deluded. When you come thus twinkling, I am bewitched. Tai chokane, sokane don don. Love song, province of Ki, village of Ogawa. Koi wa suredomo, sugata wa mienu, fuku no no kirigirisu. Though I hear the voice of the beloved, the form I cannot see, a kirigirisu. 
in the high grass. The kirigirisu is a kind of grasshopper with a very musical note. It is very difficult to see it, even when it is singing close by, for its color is exactly the color of the grass. The song alludes to the happy peasant custom of singing while at work in the fields. Love Song, Province of Mutsu, District Sugaru Washi no kokoro to okikuru fune wa raku ni misitemo kuga taenu my heart and a ship in the offing either seems to move with ease yet in both there is trouble enough love song province of suwo village of iseki namida kobushite shinku wo kataru kawari ashisa ga mashimasuru as she tells me all the pain of her toil shedding tears ever her sweetness seems to increase love song province of suruga village of gotemba hana ya yoko kike sho aru naraba hito ga fusaguni naze hiraku o flower hear me well if thou hast a soul when any one sorrows as i am sorrowing why dost thou bloom Old Tokyo Song Iya na o kata no Shinsetsu yorika Suita o kata no Muri ga yoi Better than the kindness of the disliked is the violence of the beloved. Love Song, Province of Iwami Kawa irashi sa ya Utaru no mushi wa Shinobu na watte ni Hiwo tomosu Ah, the darling Ever as I steal along the rice field path to meet my lover, the firefly kindles a light to show me the way. Comic Song, Province of Shinano Ano yama kagete, hikaru wa nanja, tsuki ka hoshi ka otaro no mushi ka, tsuki demo nae ga, hoshi demo nae ga, shuto no ouba no me ga hikaru. Chorus Mega hikaru. In the shadow of the mountain, what is that that shines so? Moon is it, or star? Or is it the firefly insect? Neither is it moon, nor yet star. It is the old woman's eye. It is the eye of my mother in law that shines. Chorus. It is her eye that shines. Kaeri Odori, province of Sanuki. I'm not sure of the real meaning of the name Kaeri Odori, literally turn dance or return dance. Oh, the cruelty, the cruelty of my mother-in-law. Course, oh, the cruelty. Even tells me to paint a picture on running water. If ever I paint a picture on running water, you will count the stars in the night sky. Count the stars in the night sky. Come, let us dance the dance of the honorable garden. Chan chan cha cha, yoi tomose, yoi tomose. Who cuts the bamboo at the back of the house? Chorus, who cuts the bamboo? My sweet lord's own bamboo, the first he planted, the first he planted. Come, let us dance the dance of the honorable garden. Chan chan cha cha, yoi tomose, yoi tomose. Oh, the cruelty, the cruelty of my mother in law, oh, the cruelty tells me to cut and make hakama out of rock if ever i cut and sew a hakama of rock then you will learn to twist the fine sand into thread twist it into thread come let us dance the dance of the honorable garden chan chan cha cha yoi tomose yoi tomose chan 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 a divided skirt of a peculiar form worn formerly by men chiefly today worn by female students also Otera Odori, Temple Dance, Province of Iga, Village called Wenomachi. Visiting the Honorable Temple when I see the August Gate, the August Gate I find to be of silver, the panels of gold. Noble indeed is the gate of the Honorable Temple, the Honorable Temple. Visiting the Honorable Temple when I see the garden, I see the young pine trees flourishing in the four directions. On the first little branch of one, the Shichugara has made her nest, has made her nest. 
visiting the honorable temple when i see the water tank i see little flowers of many colors set all about it each one having a different color of its own a different color visiting the honorable temple when i see the parlor room i find many kinds of little birds gathered all together each one singing a different song of its own a different song visiting the honorable temple when i see the guest room there i see the priest with a lamp beside him reading behind a folding screen oh how admirable it is how admirable it is the manchurian great tit it is said to bring good fortune to the owners of the garden in which it builds its nest providing that the nest be not disturbed and that the brood be protected many kinds of popular songs and especially the class of songs sung at country dances are composed after a mnemonic plan the stanzas are usually ten in number and the first syllable of each should correspond in sound to the first syllable of the numeral placed before the verse sometimes chinese numerals are used sometimes japanese but the rule is not always perfectly observed in the following example it will be observed that the correspondence of the first two syllables in the first verse with the first two syllables of the japanese word for one hitotsu is a correspondence of meaning only ichi being the chinese numeral song of fishermen province of shimosa town of choshi choshi a town of some importance is situated at the mouth of the tonegawa it is celebrated for its iwashi fishery the iwashi is a fish about the size of the sardine and is sought chiefly for the sake of its oil immense quantities of iwashi are taken off the coast they are boiled to extract the oil and the dried residue is sent inland to serve as manure hitotsu tose ichiban bune e tsumi konde kawaguchi oshikomu oyagoe kono taeryo bune futatsu tose utaba no oki kara togawa made tsuzuete oshikomu oyagoe kono taeryo bune mitsu tose mine ichido ni maneki wo age tayowase bune no nigi yakasa kono taeryo bune yotsu tose yorohiro taitemo take amaru sanbai icho no oiwashi kono taeryo bune Itsutsu to se, itsu kite mi temo, o shikaba ni, akima sukima wa sarani nai. Kono taeryo bune, mutsu to ye, mutsu kara mutsu made kasu wari ga, o ware ko wari de te ni o ware. Kono taeryo bune, nanatsu to se, natakaki, tonegawa, ichi men ni. Kasu ya abura wo tsumi okuru kono tae ryo bune yatsu tose yate bune no okiai wa kashu ga wanshuku soroete niyamairi kono tae ryo bune koko no tsutose kono uramamuro kawaguchi no nyojin ryaku wo arawasuru Kono taeryo bune. Firstly, our number one. The first ship filled up with fish squeezes her way through the river mouth with a great shouting. O ya goe. The chorus cry or chant of sailors pulling all together is called ya goe. O the ship of great fishing. Taeryo bune, literally great fishing or great catching ship. The adjective refers to the fishing, not to the ship. The real meaning of the refrain is this most successful in fishing of ships. Secondly, from the offing of Futaba even to the Togawa, the ships fast following press in with a great shouting, O oh, the ship of great fishing. Perhaps the reference is to a village at the mouth of the river Togawa, not far from Choshi, on the Tonegawa the two rivers are united by a canal but the text leaves it uncertain whether river or village is meant thirdly when all together we hoist our signal flags see how fast the cargo boats come hurrying o oh, the ship of great fishing fourthly 
night and day though the boiling be there is still too much to boil o oh, the heaps of iwashi from the three ships together o oh, the ship of great fishing fifthly whenever you go to look at the place where the dried fish are kept never do you find any room not even a crevice o oh, the ship of great fishing hoshikaba literally the hoshika place or hoshika room hoshika is the name given to dried fish prepared for use as fertilizer sixthly from six to six o'clock is cleaning and washing the great cutting and the small cutting are more than can be done o oh, this ship of great fishing seventhly all up and down the famous river tonegawa we send our loads of oil and fertilizer o oh, this ship of great fishing eighthly all the young folk drawing the yatai bune with ten thousand rejoicings visit the shrine of the god o oh, this ship of great fishing yatai is the name given to the ornamental cars drawn with ropes in a religious procession yatai bune here seems to mean either the model of the boat mounted upon such a car or a real boat so displayed in a religious procession i have seen real boats mounted upon festival cars in a religious procession in mio no seki ninthly augustly protecting all this coast the deity of the river mouth shows to us his divine favor o oh, this ship of great fishing a stranger example of this mnemonic arrangement is furnished by a children's song composed at least a hundred years ago little girls of yedo used to sing it while playing ball you can see the same ball game being played by girls today in almost any quiet street of tokyo the ball is kept bounding in a nearly perpendicular line by skilful taps of the hand delivered in time to the measure of a song and a good player should be able to sing the song through without missing a stroke if she misses she must yield the ball to another player there are many pretty ball play songs but this old-fashioned and long-forgotten one is a moral curiosity this is the more common form of the game but there are many other forms sometimes two girls play at once with the same ball striking it alternately as it bounds hitoto to ya hito wa kona hito to iu on wo shiraneba to naraji futatsu to ya fuji yore takaki chichi no on tsune ni omouto wasuri naji mitsu to ya mizu umi kaitte asashi to wa haha no onzo ya omoi beshi yotsu to ya yoshiya mazushiku kurasu tomo sugu naru michi wo maguru moji itsutsu to ya itsu mo kokoro no kawaranu wo makoto no hito to omou beshi utsu to ya munashiku tsukihi wo kurashinaba nochi no negeke to shirinu beshi nanatsu to ya nasaki wa hito no tame naru de wagami no tame to omoi beshi yatsu to ya yakuna muru yo no waza wa imo kokoro zen nara no nogaru beshi kokonotsu to ya kokoro kotaba no sugu nara ba kame ya hotokke mo mamoru beshi to to ya to toi hito to naru nara ba koko mono to iwaru beshi this is the first only a person having filial piety is worthy to be called a person if one does not know the goodness of parents one has not filial piety literally a person having filial piety is called a person the word hito person usually indicating either a man or a woman is often used in the signification of people or mankind the full meaning of the sentence is that no unfilial person deserves to be called a human being the second higher than the mount of fuji is the favor of a father think of it always never forget it the third compared with the mother's love the great lake is shallow indeed by this saying the goodness of a mother should be estimated the fourth even though in poverty we have to pass our days let us never turn aside from the one straight path 
the fifth the person whose heart never changes with time a true man or woman that person must be deemed the sixth if the time of the present be spent in vain in the time of the future must sorrow be born the seventh that a kindness done is not for the sake of others only but also for one's own sake should well be kept in mind the eighth even the sorrow of numberless misfortunes we shall easily escape if the heart be pure the ninth if the heart and the speech be kept straight and true the gods and the buddhas will surely guard us well the tenth in order to become a person held in honour as a filial person one must first be known the reader may think to himself how terribly exigent the training that could require the repetition of moral lessons even in a ball-play song true but it produced perhaps the very sweetest type of woman that this world has ever known in some dance songs the burthen is made by the mere repetition of the last line or of part of the last line of each stanza the following queer ballad exemplifies the practice and is furthermore remarkable by the reason of the curious onomatopoetic choruses introduced at certain passages of the recitative kane maki odori uta bell rapping dance song province of iga naga district a yamabushi of kyoto went to kumano there resting in the inn chojaya by the beach of shirotaka he saw a little girl three years old and he petted and hugged her playfully promising to make her his wife chorus playfully promising thereafter that yamabushi travelled in various provinces returning only when that girl was thirteen years old oh my princess my princess he cried to her my little princess pledged to me by promise oh sir yamabushi made she answer good sir yamabushi take me with you now take me with you now oh soon he said i shall come again soon i shall come again then when i come again i shall take you with me take you with me therewith the yamabushi escaping from her quickly quickly fled away with all haste he fled away having passed through tanabe and passed through minabe he fled over the kumatsu moor over the kumatsu moor kakara 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 these syllables forming a sort of special chorus are simply onomatopes intended to represent the sound of sandal feet running at utmost speed therewith the damsel pursuing quickly quickly followed after him with all speed she followed after him having passed through tanabe and passed through minabe she pursued him over the kumatsu moor over the kumatsu moor then the yamabushi fleeing came as he fled to the river amoda and cried to the boatman of the river amoda ho oh, good boatman good sir boatman behind me comes a maid pursuing pray do not take her across good boatman good sir boatman de boku de boku de boku den den these onomatopes chanted by all the dancers together in chorus with appropriate gesture represent the sound of the ferryman's single oar or skull working upon its wooden peg the syllables have no meaning in themselves then the damsel pursuing came to the river amoda and called to the boatman bring hither the boat take me over in the boat no i will not bring the boat i will not take you over my boat is forbidden to carry women forbidden to carry women if you do not take me over i will cross if you do not take me over i will cross there is a way to cross the river amoda taking off her sandals and holding them aloft she entered the water and at once turned into a dragon with twelve horns fully grown with twelve horns fully grown then the yamabushi fleeing reached the temple dojoji and cried to the priest of the temple dojoji ho oh, good priest behind me a damsel comes pursuing hide me i beseech you good sir priest good sir priest then the priest after holding consultation took down from its place the big bell of the temple and under it they hid him under it 
they hid him then the dragon maid pursuing followed him up the temple dojoji for a moment she stood in the gate of the temple she saw that bell and viewed it with suspicion she thought i must wrap myself about it once she thought i must wrap myself about it twice at the third wrapping the bell was melted and began to flow like boiling water like boiling water so is told the story of the wrapping of the bell many damsels dwell by the seashore of japan but who among them like the daughter of choja will become a dragon become a dragon this is all the song of the wrapping of the bell this is all the song all the song this legend forms the subject of several japanese dramas both ancient and modern the original story is that a buddhist priest called anchin having rashly excited the affection of a maiden named kiyohime and being by reason of his vows unable to wed her sought safety from her advances in flight kiyohime by the violence of her frustrated passion therewith became transformed into a fiery dragon and in that shape she pursued the priest to the temple called dojoji in kumano modern kishu where he tried to hide himself under the great temple bell but the dragon coiled herself around the bell which at once became red-hot so that the body of the priest was totally consumed in this rude ballad Giyohime, figures only as the daughter of an innkeeper the choja or rich man of his village while the priest anchin is changed into a yamabushi the yamabushi are or at least were wandering priests of the strange sect called shugendo itinerant exorcists and diviners professing both shinto and buddhism of late years their practices have been prohibited by law and a real yamabushi is now seldom to be met with the temple dojoji is still a famous place of pilgrimage it is situated not far from gobo on the western coasts of kishu the incident of anchin and the dragon is said to have occurred in the early part of the tenth century i shall give only one specimen of the true street ballad the kind of ballad commonly sung by wandering samisen players it is written in an irregular measure varying from twelve to sixteen syllables in length the greater number of lines having thirteen syllables i do not know the date of its composition but i am told by aged persons who remember hearing it sung when they were children that it was popular in the period of tempo eighteen thirty to eighteen forty three and is not divided into stanzas but there are pauses at irregular intervals marked by the refrain yanre okichi seiza kudoki the ditty of okichi and seiza now hear the pitiful story of two that died for love in kyoto was the thread shop of yoimon a merchant known far and near a man of much wealth his business prospered his life was fortunate one daughter he had an only child by name okichi at sixteen years she was lovely as a flower also he had a clerk in his house named seiza just in the prime of youth aged twenty and two Yanre now the young man seiza was handsome and okichi fell in love with him at sight and the two were so often together that their secret affection became known and the matter came to the ears of the parents of okichi and the parents hearing of it felt that such a thing could not be suffered to continue Yanre. so at last the mother having called okichi into a private room thus spoke to her oh my daughter i hear that you have formed a secret relation with the young man seiza of our shop are you willing to end that relation at once and do not think any more about that man okichi answer me o oh my daughter yanre oh my dear mother answered okichi what is this that you ask me to do the closeness of the relation between seiza and me is the closeness of the relation of the ink to the paper that it penetrates therefore whatever may happen o mother of mine to separate from seiza is more than i can bear yanre 
literally that affinity as for ink and paper soaked like affinity then the father having called seiza to the innermost private room thus spoke to him i called you here only to tell you this you have turned the mind of our daughter away from what is right and even to hear of such a matter is not to be borne pack up your things at once and go to-day is the utmost limit of the time that you remain in this house yon rei now seiza was a native of osaka without saying more than yes yes he obeyed and went away returning to his home there he remained for five days thinking only of okichi and because of his longing for her he fell sick and as there was no cure and no hope for him he died Yanre. then one night okichi in a moment of sleep saw the face of seiza close to her pillow so plainly that she could not tell whether it was real or only a dream and rising up she looked about but the form of seiza had vanished Yandere. because of this she made up her mind to go at once to the house of seiza and without being seen by any one she fled from the home of her parents Yanre. when she came to the ferry at the next village she did not take the boat but went round by another road and making all haste she found her way to the city of osaka there she asked for the house of seiza and she learned that it was in a certain street the third house from a certain bridge Yandre. arriving at last before the home of seiza she took off her travelling hat of straw and seating herself on the threshold of the entrance she cried out pardon me kindly is not this the house of master seiza Yanre. then oh the pity of it she saw the mother of seiza weeping bitterly and holding in her hand a buddhist rosary oh my good young lady the mother of seiza asked whence have you come and whom do you want to see Yanre. and okichi said i am the daughter of the thread merchant of kyoto and i have come all the way here only because of the relation that has long existed between master seiza and myself therefore i pray you uh, kindly permit me to see him Yanrei. alas made answer the mother weeping seiza whom you have come so far to see is dead to-day is the seventh day from the day on which he died hearing these words o kichi herself could only shed tears Yanrei but after a while she took her way to the cemetery and there she found the sotoba erected above the grave of seiza and leaning upon it she wept loud Yanre. a wooden lath bearing buddhist texts planted above graves for a full account of the sotoba see my exotics and retrospectives the literature of the dead then how fearful a thing is the longing of a person the grave of seiza split asunder and the form of seiza rose up therefrom and spoke Yanre. in the original hito no omoe wa osoroshi mono yo how fearful a thing is the thinking of a person the word omoi used here in the sense of longing refers to the weird power of seiza's dying wish to see his sweetheart even after his burial this longing has the strength to burst open the tomb in the old english ballad of william and marjorie see child volume two page one fifty one there is also a remarkable fancy about the opening and closing of a grave she followed him high she followed him low till she came to yon churchyard green and there the deep grave opened up and young william he lay down ah is not this okichi that has come kind indeed it was to have come to me from so far away my okichi do not weep thus never again even though you weep can we be united in this world but as you love me truly 
i pray you to set some fragrant flowers before my tomb and to have a buddhist service said for me upon the anniversary of my death Yanre. and with these words the form of seiza vanished oh wait wait for me cried okichi wait one little moment i cannot let you return alone i shall go with you in a little time Yandre. with this episode compare the close of the english ballad sweet william's ghost child volume two page one forty eight oh stay my only true love stay the constant margaret cried wan grew her cheeks she closed her een stretched her soft limbs and died then quickly she went beyond the temple gate to a moat some four or five cho distant and having filled her sleeves with small stones into the deep water she cast her forlorn body a cho is about one fifteenth of a mile and now i shall terminate this brief excursion into unfamiliar song fields by the citation of two buddhist pieces the first is from the famous work Gempe seizuiki account of the prosperity and decline of the houses of gen and hei probably composed during the latter part of the twelfth or at the beginning of the thirteenth century it is written in the measure called imayo that is to say in short lines alternately of seven and of five syllables seven five seven five seven five ad libitum the other philosophical composition is from a collection of songs called ruitachi bushi ruitachi airs belonging to the sixteenth century one major imayo sama mo kokoro mo kawaru kana otsuru namida wa take no mizu myo hyo renge no ike to nari guze no funi ni sao sashite shizumo wagan ni wo no ze tamai both form and mind lo how these change the falling of tears is like the water of a cataract let them become the pool of the lotus of the good law pulling there upon the boat of salvation vouchsafe that my sinking body may ride two period of bunroku fifteen ninety two to fifteen ninety six who twice shall live his youth what flower faded blooms again fugitive as dew is the form regretted seen only in a moment of dream End of section 12.